Hi everybody, it's me again. Today I'll be teaching you integration by parts. Integration by parts involve integrating the product of two functions. The rule that we have to follow here is integrate one, leave one, subtract the integral of integrate one, differentiate one. Here are three examples that we will go through. In our very first example, we have to integrate e of x multiplied by cos of x. So here the problem here is, the problem is do we integrate um, cos or do we integrate exponential? Now there's a very simple trick that we follow. It's called Lyate. Now what does Lyate stand for? L stands for log. I stands for inverse trig. A stands for algebraic function. T stands for trig functions. And E stands for exponential. Okay, now as you go down the list, it becomes more and more preferable to integrate. So for example, if we have log multiplied by a trig function, we would prefer to integrate trig rather than log. And if we have, say, inverse trig combined with exponential, we would prefer to integrate exponential rather than inverse trig. Okay, now following this, let's go through our first example. In our first example, following Li8, we will prefer to integrate exponential. So following the rule, we have to integrate one, leave one. So integrate exponential, leave cos, subtract, integrate one, differentiate one. So integrate exponential and differentiate cos. Now, as you can see, we still need to do further work to solve this problem. Now, this second part, we need to use integration by part again. And we have to integrate e of x, leave sign, subtract, integrate e of x, differentiate sign. Okay, now for the first part, let's simplify this. You can see that e of x is a common factor that we can take out. And for this part, we can take it, uh, we can move it to the left hand side of the equation, which becomes 2 lot of the integral of e of x times cos of x. Okay, and by dividing the entire equation by 2, we have solved our integral. Now, don't forget to plus C as your final answer. Okay, so that's your final answer. Now, let's look at example number 2. Um, in example number two, we have to integrate x to the power 5 multiplied by log of x. Again, following Li8, this time we have algebraic functions compared, uh, uh, combined with the log function. So we would prefer to integrate algebraic rather than log. So we integrate one, leave one, so integrate x to the power 5. And then we subtract, integrate one, differentiate one. Okay, now simplifying this, we get integral of x to the power 5 on 6 dx. And to integrate this, it's very simple. We just get x to the power of 6 divided by 36.
again plus C, so that's your final answer. Now let's go through question number three. In this case, we have definite integral and we have to evaluate the inverse um, integral of inverse cos from zero to one. Um, now, this is not exactly product of two functions. As you can see, we only have inverse cos of x. So how can we use integration by parts? Now, what we can do is we can use one times inverse cos of x. So that gives us the product of an algebraic function compared with an inverse cos function. So following Lie 8, we will prefer to integrate algebraic rather than inverse cos. So integrate 1, we get x. Subtract, integrate 1, differentiate 1. So the integral from 0 to 1, integrate 1, oops, get x, and differentiate inverse cos of x, we get 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Don't forget there's a negative, so let's put it outside. Now evaluating the first part, we put in 1 into inverse cos, we get inverse cos of 1 gives us um, 0, so that's 0. Subtract, putting 0 into x, we also get 0. So 0 minus 0 obviously is 0. So we have 0 for the first part. Now for the second part, we can use the reverse chain rule for this, for, to evaluate this. So let's write it like this. Now, using the reverse chain rule to get this integral, we can see that we can differentiate square root of 1 minus x squared. When we differentiate square root of 1 minus x squared, we get this integral above. So, let's evaluate this. Putting 1 in here, we get 0. And putting 0 in here, we get minus 1. So that gives us 1 as our final answer.